Welcome back uh, to Advanced Higher Chemistry, folks. Um, what we're going to tackle today, we're going to, we, we're going to follow on from the last video where we explored the principles of quantum mechanics. There are three principles. There's actually four. There's a really cool one, a fourth one, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. But we're not going to, that was taken out by the SQA and their infinite wisdom. So life is too short. If you're interested, go and look it up. It's fascinating. Um, but we had Aufbau, which was the order of filling of energy levels, which is relatively common sense, you would think. We had Hund's rule of maximum multiplicity, which I called seats on the bus, in that electrons do not like to occupy, um, they don't like to share orbitals of degenerate energy, equal energy, until they're absolutely forced to. And before that point, before they're forced to start sharing, they'll occupy individual orbitals with a parallel spin to each other. And lastly, we had um, Pauli's exclusion principle, which I stupidly said in the last video, explains why you can't pass solid objects through each other despite us claiming that elements, uh, atoms are mostly empty space. I didn't explain why. I'm very, uh, very sorry about that. Sloppy job. The simple answer is, I can not put my hand through the table because all the atoms, the electrons in my hand would have the same electronic configuration as those in the table. And that's what actually blocks you from doing that, which is quite cool. That's why atoms can't pass through each other. Sorry, ghosts. I hate to spoil your reality, but that's life. Um... Okay, today we're going to open with a question. Uh, in science, we need proof of stuff. Otherwise, it's just up there with the Easter Bunny. We don't do blind belief in science. We need some evidence. And what is the evidence for all this quantum mechanics nonsense? Because it sounds like fairy tales, frankly. The wonderful answer from 1830-odds is staring us right in the face all the time. Why is the periodic table this weird shape here? We just accept it. We're going to know by the end of this video exactly why it's this shape. Um, but talking about shapes, uh, we'll leave you that uh, that clickbait question there, eh? uh, and we'll have a look at some shapes of some orbitals here. Helps if I get them the right way up. Um, these are some shapes, just in case you hadn't quite caught into it before. Um, the SQA want you to be uh, familiar with the shapes of S orbitals. Not exactly going to strain the old grey matter there, is it? They're all spheres. They actually go up increasing radii, of course, with each value of n. They become physically larger. These are the p orbitals. P orbitals are labelled px, py and pz and a couple of years ago the SQA tweaked uh, the syllabus and they want you to realise that they have got different names depending on, of course, which axis they lie. I did describe these as hourglass or sort of um, egg timer shapes um, and these are the shapes of the p orbitals. Three of them, of course, because there are three p orbitals. Why are there three p orbitals? Because <laughs> for a p, then you've got L being 1. And if L is 1, then ML is negative 1, 0, and 1. Three values, three orbitals. There's only one s orbital, of course, um, because uh, for an s orbital, you're dealing with an L value of 0. And if L is 0, ML is just 0. That's one value, one orbital. Please remember that an orbital is a volume of space which can uh, accept a maximum of two electrons. So we had our orbital box notation, didn't we? Where we could fit uh, one electron and then the second one in the s orbitals. And if we stick with the same colour guide in the p's, we had, according to Hund, one, two, three, four, five, six. Excellent. All good so far. This weird mishmash here, by the way, is just reminding you and me that they all occupy, they all overlap the same volume of space. Some people ask from time to time, are these all separate? Nope, nope, nope. They're all crushed round about the nucleus of the atom. But don't worry about that. You'll never be asked that. Um, so uh, we also need, you need to be familiar with the shapes of D orbitals, ladies and gents. So here's some I prepared earlier. Um, there are five D orbitals. I haven't talked much about D so far. Um, cast your minds back, we had values of L and then we had the type of orbital. When L is 0, it's an S orbital. When it's 1, it was P, a last sheet. This is happening for L being 2 and these are called D orbitals. And there are 5 D orbitals because when L is 2, ML is negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. And 5. So each one can take a pair of electrons, so 10 electrons in total in the d orbitals. Rather weird shapes, eh? Um, if I were to put a little asterisk on two of these, 
I would put a little asterisk on that one. And this one, I wonder why. Mm. Anything different about these two compared with the others? Feel free to pause the video and have a wee look. Or of course you could simply cheat and look it up. But there's no fun in that, is there? Um, so that's the shapes of the orbitals, guys. You need to be able to recognise these. They're in the notes. They'll be in the Scholar PDF notes. Um, or you can just Google them. As I say, you want to look them up for yourself. Um, my next thing uh, that I'd like to tackle today is a redox of Aufbau. We want to come back and have a quick look um, at the Aufbau principle. Um, because I left you dangling at the end there, I, I hinted at why we'd only ever tackled the first 20 elements before. Um, because if we follow the arrows here, we fill 1s, and then we fill 2s, and then we come back and fill 2p, and then 3s, and then we fill 3p, that's all fine. And then, that's a slight oddity, we're actually filling 4s before we fill 3d. Um, I want you to be aware of that. Excuse me, just two seconds, dry throat. Sorry about that. Um, let's try tackling the electronic configuration of, oh, say, calcium. Element 20, the one we told you not to go beyond, death lies beyond calcium. That might be a slight exaggeration, of course. Um, let's do calcium atomic number 20. So, uh, let's do spectroscopic notation because life's too short to draw the arrows for orbital box notation. 1s2. And then we skip up to the second energy level, 2. Now you can have s orbitals in the second, and you can have p orbitals in the second. s orbitals take two electrons, p orbitals take up to six. According to this, we now fill 3s. Great. 3s. How many electrons down, by the way? Two, four, ten. Ten down, ten to go. Um, 3s2. Then we go to 3s, and then we go down to 3p. And they can take up to six. So 2, 4, 10, 12, 18. We only need two more. And after 3p, we fill 4s. So 4s2. So that is calcium. Um, if I can switch back to... just realised I was doing that in portrait mode for some bizarre reason. Sorry about that, folks. Probably because that's the way I printed it. If we can switch back to our periodic table, we are currently sitting at calcium, which is here, element 20. Now we can skip to scandium, which is element 21, the first of our transition metals. And we're going to drift today into the transition metals. We don't talk that much about this entire centre block until we get to sixth year. Um, we'll talk a lot more about it this year. So if I was to try and tackle scandium, I would have exactly the same as this with one more electron. So according to this, 4s first, so 3p, and then 4s, and now 3d. So it's going to be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Can I just check this still on the camera because we're doing portrait? Yes, it is. 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, and now we'll start to fill the 3ds. So now we're in 3d and 1. We have one electron. Um, on a smaller note, can I just go back to... Um, my original qu my question which I, that I opened the video with, which was, what evidence do we have of all this stuff? Well, let me do in red. Let me actually fill in what the outer electron is that's being filled. Sorry. Uh, let me fill in the configuration of the outer electron for each of these first 20 elements. So hydrogen, 1s1. Helium, 1s2. Um, we're down to lithium here, which will be 1s2. But then I'm just doing the outer ones, so we're on 2s1, and then 2s2, and then the outer electron for boron will be 2p1, 2p2, 2p3, 2p4, you get in the pattern, 2p5, and of course we're down to um, neon here, which is 2p6 for its outer electrons. If you want to do the full neon, we'll just do the full one at the side here, 1s2. 2s2, 2p6, 2, 4, 10. So that's neon. Then we're down to here, and we're on to 3s2. Three, oh, I do apologise. 3s1, 3s2. And then here we're on 3p1, 3p2, 3p3, 3p4, 3p5, and 3p6. 
Again, I can do the full one here, just to show you I'm not jiggling the figures any. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 2, 4, 10, 12, 18 for Argon. And then we can do 4s1, 4s2, as we saw earlier on, and then 3d1. 3d2, 3d3, you get the point duh, 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 up to 3d10. This is where I get all excited and geeky, because I asked the question, what evidence do we have for all these quantum mechanics numbers actually existing? Look, 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 look. Why do you think these are in a column here? This entire column here is filling the S orbitals. That's why there's two of them. That's why it goes one, two, and then stop. And why is there a block of six along here? That's because we're filling the p orbitals. This entire chunk down here, the outer electrons are always going to be p's. That's why this whole block is six elements wide. So that's why that's two and then six wide. And also, of course, I'm hoping that in your head you're going, ah, oh, that's why the transition metals are ten elements along. D1, D2, D3, up to D10. So this whole block here is filling D electrons. And there are 10 up to 10 D electrons. That's why this is a maximum of 10 wide. So the shape of the periodic table. Thank you, Mr. Mendeleev, who, I mean, they started off, if you don't know the history of this, they started off with a list of, literally just a list along with that, of all these elements. How are you supposed to arrange them? Mendeleev figured out that if you put the ones on top of each other in a vertical line that had similar properties, then they formed this nice pattern. He even worked out you could fill in the missing gaps and predict what their properties were. And the reason, the fundamental reason, that this has the same property as this or this is because they are all filling the S1 electrons. That's your outer electron, and in chemistry, that's the thing that determines how it reacts. How cool is that? Um, if you're very clever, by the way, you'll have worked out that I haven't talked about f orbitals much. So we have l, we have l values, and we have orbital types. And I've done this a few times. Sorry, it's just uh, zero. Do they are s orbitals one p two d. You you are required by the SQ to know that f orbitals do exist, and that's for a three value of l. Now go ahead and figure out if l is three, how many values of m are there? Pause the video if you want. The answer, of course, is negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, uh, 0, plus 1, plus 2, plus 3. So 7. There's 7 values of um, ML, which means there should be 14 electrons when you start filling up the F orbitals and look. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 14. So these guys here... The lanthanides and the actinides that fit in here, these are filling the F orbitals. So these are F block elements. So that's what the SQ wants you to know. I just thought I'd fill this in in colours, different colours for different blocks, guys. So these are F block, so it's a small F, sorry. F block elements. These are D block elements, which we call the transition metals. This pair here, of course, is S. And this block of six along here are P's. Sorry, I get all excited about that because that's that's the reason the periodic table is this shape. And also, by the way, if you've never noticed before, of course, you're going up an energy level. Every time you skim down there, you're going up an energy level. So N increases by one. This is the wonderful solid evidence long before we even knew about atoms. Apparently, Mendeleev, uh, in his later life, didn't believe in atoms and would storm out of lectures if you used the A word, which is ironic. Because his works, his life's work backs up all this stuff about atoms and electrons being arranged as such. Right, transition metal configurations. Before I go, um, I, I it, did you notice I cheated ever so slightly? I went D1, D2, D3, mm, up to D10. There's a reason for that. Right, no budget spared on this channel for um, props. We've got our 10 uh, transition metals. Um... Scandium, titanium, vanadium, chromium, manganese, uh, iron, cobalt, nickel, 
copper and zinc. We will look in the very near future. Um, transition metals. What is the definition of a transition metal? Good question. It's a bit like the definition of a planet. It's not what people, some people think. And these guys here, eh, they're just, just squeak in for a couple of reasons that we'll have a look at later on. Um, so, these are D-block elements, of course, and we've now realised that the D orbitals fill after the four S orbitals. That doesn't seem to make much sense. Um, and coming up in the very near future, we'll, I'll tell you something that might excuse that. So, let's do the outer electron configuration. These are... We had, let's pop on, let's fire on uh, potassium and calcium on here, why not? So we're talking um, 4s1 for the outers, 4s2, and now we're filling the d's. Um, and I'll go with a different colour for d. So 3d1, 3d2, 3d3. Excuse me a second, sorry, somebody's wanting my attention. 3d5, 3d5, 3d6, 3d7, 3d8, 3d10, 3d10. Wait a minute. Has the old fool made a mistake? What's up with this? What's up with this? Well, you notice I've only put the outer electron configuration for these guys, because technically speaking, it's actually 4s2, 3d1, 4s2, 3d1, 3d2, 4s2, 3d3. Now this is an interesting one. 4s1, 3d5. So if you count the number of electrons, one, two, three, there should only be four electrons here. What's actually happened here? is one has jumped out of the 4S and jumped into 3D. So the total number of electrons is correct. And then we'll change back to blue because there's nothing unusual about this one. 4S2, 3D5, 4S2, 3D6, 4S2, 3D7, 4S2, 3D8. This one here, 4S1, 3D10. So this should be nine in the D orbitals. And what we've done is we've stolen one of the S's and put it into the D's as well, in exactly the same way as we did here. This should be 3D4, should be 4S2, 3D4, but we've actually promoted one of the 4S this is into the 3D's. So the SQA want you to realise there are two anomalies. The reason <laughs> that the explanation they give you for those anomalies is an interesting one. I'm not about to contradict it here. I'm just going to say... There's an interesting stability about half-filled orbitals. Half-filled orbitals are slightly more stable than you'd otherwise expect. So given a choice between one full and one not full versus two half-fulls, then that's why this electronic configuration is as it is. This one here, we also know that full orbitals are nice and stable. So what's happened here is instead of 4s2, 3d9, where there's enough of an energy gain given back to us to enable us to pinch one out of here and pop it into here so we end up with one full and one half full as opposed to what common sense might suggest which is 4s2, 3d9 in this situation that's full and that's like that's just mash there um, so there are two of these transition metal elements which have an unusual configuration chromium and copper oh sorry about that Chromium and copper have two slight oddball configurations. The SQA want you to know that. And they are telling you that the reason behind that is because half-filled orbitals are more stable than you would otherwise expect. If we look at what the common sense solution is for this one, 4s2, 3d4, again, we have full and nothing. Whereas this gives us two half-fulls. So this was the one that actually happens. This gives us a half-full and a full. So that's the one that happens for copper. Okay, I'd like to squeeze one last thing in before we go, folks. And that is, um, I did say earlier on, that we fill the 4S electrons before the 3D. Now, that does not seem to make sense at first glance because that is a higher number than that. And what I said to you is that the 4S electron la layer is a lower energy than the 3D, but that's only true for empty orbitals. <laughs> Once you put electrons in them, 
they reshuffle their energies to what you would expect. So for empty orbitals, we've got um, 4s, a uh, lower energy than 3, so this is increasing energy. So according to Aufbau, we fill 4s before 3d. Fine. For filled, then if we plot energy, these rejig themselves in the order that you would expect according to the value of n. So we actually have 3d here and 4s here. So once you've put electrons into them, the highest energy uh, orbitals become, as you would expect, 4s. Common sense has reasserted itself. Well, so what? Who cares about that? Well, we care about it because now we're going to have a look at the electronic configuration of transition metal ions. Because this is such a favourite question um, from the SQA. Uh, classically, it pops up in multiple choice. And they'll ask you, what is the electronic configuration of cobalt 2 plus? Um, now, if we go back to here for a second, we find cobalt here. And it's the seventh one along. So there are seven deuter electrons. So you might expect it to be changing from 3d7 down to 3d5. However, I said here that the highest energy level is now that they're filled up, the highest is 4s. So, we, st we actually lose, we don't change the d's, uh, we lose the 4s electrons first. So these guys get taken out first, and then we start to chip away at the number of d's that are there. So if I put down here the full electronic configuration for cobalt, I'd have 1s2, 2s2, we don't care about these ones lower down, I know, but it's just for completion. 3s2, 3p6. Now, 4s2, 3d7. That's the order we filled them in, but I'm telling you that these two effectively have swapped places now. So it's actually 3d7, 4s2. Now that changes things a lot because we've got, this is cobalt zero by the way, this is cobalt with no charge. And we want cobalt with a 2 plus charge, so we are going to chip away at these two. So in fact, this is the electronic configuration of cobalt 2 plus. To put that into a verbal rule, um, we fill the 4s before the 3d, but we empty the 4s before the 3d as well. It's not a case of uh, last in, first out. Um, and that's, that's because of this weird ordering here. 4S starts when it's empty, 4S is below 3D. So we fill this first and then we fill this. But once they are filled, their energy levels reassert themselves to the correct order and 4S becomes the highest orbital. And therefore that's the one we remove electrons from first before we start to chip away at the 3D. If it had been cobalt, say four plus, then we would have removed these two and then we would have dropped two down in here as well. Um, just thought I'd throw that in at the end there, the slightly oddball rules. Um, it's a favourite question from the SQA and it often pops up in multiple choice though, folks. So you fill the 4S before the 3D, but you also empty the 4S before the 3D. Bit counterintuitive to say the least, just thought I'd clarify that. Thanks for listening, folks.